I'm, I'm very honoured to be here and uh, I, I first want to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on behalf of my family. My partner Tanya Kulmakri is in, in the audience and I'll begin with uh, what uh, uh, Liz started. Uh, we, we've, uh, we've just had a, a little baby. He was born right in the middle of the nurses dispute. We were very honoured that he was delivered by nurses and, and midwives in, in, in union t-shirts. <laughs> he, he, he's already been on the picket line in Geelong with his, with his, uh, with his older brother. They've both been on the picket lines uh, supporting the nurses. And uh, my, my uh, or, or boy Magnus, we were on the first picket line in Geelong. We, we actually cycled to the picket line. So that's a, it's a great connection to start with. Uh, uh, I uh, uh, want to tell you a little bit about uh, my uh, uh, 48 years I've been a, a trade unionist. I've been 48 years on, I, I joined, I looked at my discharge book, I joined my first ship in 1964 uh, on what do you call Remembrance Day, on uh, November the 11th. I joined in the Royal Docks in London. Uh, I joined the ship. Hayden from New Zealand is a deck boy, a 15 year old deck boy. I was already a member of the Seamen's Union, National Union of Seamen. We had 100,000 members at least in, in 1964. My dad, who took me to sea, he, he, he joined the National Union of Seamen in 1925. I've, I've, I looked at his discharge book the other, other day. So my dad, my late dad, uh, joined the union back in. And I'll have to tell you my story as a trade unionist. To begin with, what happened to my dad? My dad uh, went to the fishing at 13 up on the ship. Does any of you know, not know where the Shetland Islands is? Uh, the Shetland Islands are to the north of Scotland, nearly the Arctic Circle. All my ancestors uh, are from the Shetland Islands. Um, uh, our, our, our people are, are, are Vikings. The Vikings, uh, we come to Shetland in the 8th century. Before that, uh, the people there were the Picts. If you don't know who the Picts were, the, the painted people. And the Scots colonized us in the, eighth cent uh, the 12th century, and we haven't forgotten it. <laughs> but I'm very proud of also my Scots ancestry as well. But most Shetlanders were, were like their ancestors, merchant seamen. My dad went to sea, and he, uh, he went to sea in uh, 1925, after a... Uh, uh, I think five years at the fishing, and uh, right away he uh, experienced 1925, 1926 was the general strike in Britain. He, he saw the effects of the general strike in, uh, in Glasgow that he was shipping out of. He, uh, he jumped ship in 1928 in Vancouver, and it's all related to this, and after, a, 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 after, a, after a mutiny, and when the depression hit, my dad bummed his way, he was very proud, to, and he told me this when he got me uh, sitting down at sea with him, he bummed his way jumping trains across Canada and, met, and he met the Wobblies, he met the, the IWW in all the camps, the unemployed camps across Canada where Dad had walked and jumped in the starving, they bummed, they asked for work, uh, for food for work. He was very proud to bum his way across Canada. And he got a ship in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Montreal and ended up three years he was away. And uh, then he actually took part in, in uh, illegally, because uh, it was illegal, on crew and ships to the Spanish Civil War because he joined the Communist Party in, in, uh, in, in Govan. So I was brought up with a communist dad and I'm so fucking proud and glad I was because it gave me another aspect to life where nobody around me was, was thinking like I was. I supported the Cubans and the Cuban uh, at school. I was the only one supporting the Cubans <laughs> in 1961. Uh, and people were saying, what you, you know, I was supporting Castro because Dad supported Castro. And I have to tell you my mom's story. My mom was taken into service in the, in, the, in, the, in the 30s to the richest people in Scotland. She went as a young girl and had to walk out backwards with her, with her, with her, uh, to the fucking most evil bunch of people in Scotland, the, the Weemses from the Kingdom of Fife. They owned everything above and below the ground, which was the richest coal seams in, in Scotland. Then people did their own train. Mum had to travel down to London with them in, a, in their own train. And uh, so you can see why my anger is still here. And, uh, and my topic tonight is keeping the dream alive, because it's very hard to keep the dream alive when we 
sometimes we, we suffer uh, big disputes, but I have been so lucky to, to have met the people I, uh, I uh, what do you call it? <laughs> I, I, I uh, ended up taking me, me dad's role. I jumped ship here in 1970. I jumped an English ship in Brisbane in uh, 1970 and, uh, and landed in, in uh, working on the Sydney Opera House. And there I met the, the best and most inspirational trade unions I have ever met in my life the New South Wales branch of the BLF. Uh, I was taken to, to Jack Mundy because, because I had joined the Communist Party. ASIO had found out that I'd uh, entered the, the country illegally and I'd, I was interrogated by ASIO. And they, they quite bluntly said, we are, not going to, we are not going to recommend you be allowed to stay in Aussie. And uh, at the time, uh, McMahon was the Prime Minister. If, a lot of you probably don't know, but Billy McMahon was a Liberal Prime Minister. 21 years, I think, of uh, Liberal before Gough Whitlam. Uh, t 23 years, I think it was. And uh, so here was me facing uh, deportation, and I was, uh, well, I was brought to meet Jack. I mean, Jack Mundy is, is and he's uh, 82 now, Jack. Uh, he was the secretary of the BLF. And the BLF, which I was, became the youngest organiser in, in 72, 40 years ago, uh, this year, I was the youngest organiser in the BLF. We, took, we embarked on a, the most democratic union probably in the world. We are all, uh, I was at the branch meeting where the, the branch uh, declared that all officials could only spend two tenures in office, the same as the, the what do you call it, the American prison, and then back in the job. Back in the job. You had to go back as a, as a, as a rank and filler. I was at the branch meeting. I was also at the historic branch meeting where we declared the first, the first green man, which was Kelly's Bush, the first recognised green, is, is the term green. And Kelly's Bush, if, if you don't know, is on the North Shore. And I'll tell you what I said when I went to the branch meeting as a young, as a young comrade. I said, what the fucking hell we got to do with them upper class middle, uh, upper middle class women on the North Shore? That's what I said. And it was Jack Mundy that said, when it comes to the environment, we have to, what do you call it, we have to... Uh, make uh, what do you call, alliances even with the, with the wealthy. And uh, he was proved to be right because out of that, out of that, uh, that Kelly's bush came the Greens in Germany. Petra Kelly, the founder of the Greens in Germany, heard what the BLs was doing in, in, uh, in, uh, in Sydney. She, she actually, the late Petra Kelly, told me herself that we were the greatest inspiration for her starting the Greens in Germany. So you know from this little, little group of, well, 10,000 building workers in Sydney created a worldwide movement. I was involved in the rocks, which is the most protecting the rocks area in Sydney, which is the most visited, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, site anywhere in, in Australia. There's more people going to see. If it hadn't been for the Builders Labourers Federation and the Residents Action Group and the FEDFA, the, 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 it, would have, it would have been smashed, it would have been the same as Sydney. I was involved in Woolloomooloo, Victoria Street, uh, Helen Keller House, and the most inspirational involvement us as a union was our solidarity with Aboriginal people. I was involved in the tent embassy 40 years ago with Gary Foley. I went as a young building worker. Our union had put on two buses uh, where we went in and re-established the tent embassy that had been viciously smashed by the, by the federal, federal police. We re-erected it. And 40, and what is it? Uh, uh, in Invasion Day this year, I took me and Tanya went there with our uh, eight-year-old boy and a four-week-old baby. We took to the tent embassy. I mean, it's funny how the the old uh, what do you call it? The cycle keeps going. So in in, in our boy Nicholas Shea in his uh, in his tenth uh, birthday, which will be the fiftieth anniversary, and my boy Magnus's. His 18th birthday, when they go back and say, we were there on the, the 40th anniversary. <laughs> and that's how, that's how you continued on. The first time I was arrested for a... For a uh, because I come out here in 1966, uh, and you, you've got to imagine Melbourne in 1966. Aboriginal people were not recognised as citizens. They were uh, fauna and fa fauna. I could not believe it when I come out here that the Aboriginal people, the traditional owners of the land, that had fought for their independence and are still fighting was flowers and, and animals. That's what they were. I mean, how can a so-called civilized country put their indigenous people as flowers and animals? In 
so my first arrest, along with 13 others in, in, in Redfern, was, uh, was at, a, uh, at a fighting for land rights. And I spent one of the best nights, and I've spent a couple of nights in jail, was, was with, was with uh, Tom Uren. If any of you don't know who Tom Uren was, Tom Uren spent, what do you call it, uh, three years on the death railway with, with, uh, with uh, uh, Weary Dunlop, you know, and Tom Uren, you know, he became a, a lady. So this is the influence that come on my, in my life. In, uh, after going to South Australia, where I lived for 28 years, I, I became so unemployable, I was sacked, I was sacked by the... Because what happened in, in, in Sydney was that, uh, and it's a bit of a, that's why we almost tossed me and Liz who was going to talk first because we got a difference of opinion on. The BLF Victorian branch, in collaboration with all the employers, the developers, for a, to get re-registered, made a deal to smash our union. And it, they were successful. It took them six months, it paid for by the bosses, the flat, if you look at the, I won't name it because it's, it's slander, but if you look at the, 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 the crane that's building that, it's called Multiplex, Western Australia. Multiplex financed the whole thing for a group of 40 union officials to go over and smash the most what you call, democratic union in the world, I think. It hit 140 women. We took women into the, women forced themselves on the jobs we supported it. We had a woman organiser, we had a woman uh, in the executive, we had a Communist Party branch of about 60, but we were more than a Communist Party branch. We basically, Sydney supported us. So the union was smashed. Uh, I, I ended up in South Australia. I got followed there by, uh, by my history and, uh, and uh, my name was Dave Mackay, Dave Irvine. Even Dave Mackay couldn't get a job. Dave Irvine. <laughs> and that, that, that's, that's how, no, you just punch your name in and they, they find you. But then you could have bodgy names in your tickets. You didn't have to show your ticket. So I, my, uh, my bodgy names couldn't get work. And, uh, so what happened then was uh, the FIA, which is, and all these unions I'm talking about are no longer there. My first union in, in Australia was the Painters and Dockers in Sydney. I was a, a what do you call, kindred labour there. I worked under a bodgy name there, and I can't even remember the name there, but, but it, was, it was somebody else's book. I, the Builders' Labours had gone. The union that really was the big influence me and, and, uh, and uh, Jerome, the Siemens Union of Australia, I got back to sea in 1980 because I couldn't get work. The union got me back. And the Siemens Union uh, of Australia was recognised by Siemens. It's the best Siemens Union in the world. The Danish come second and the Scandinavian, but the Siemens Union, and the most respected internationally. Uh, Nelson Mandela, the only union official in the world who, when he came out of jail, that had any time with him, was Pat Garrity. Nelson Mandela acknowledged what the Siemens Union of Australia had, and the WWF had done to, to, to bring apartheid done. We, we spent days and days on picket lines when South Ocean uh, Marine, the South African shipping company used to come here. It was a five day strike. We drove them away econ economically. The, the tugs wouldn't take them in, the pilot wouldn't take them in, the wharfies wouldn't load them. We, we used to do five days in each port. Economically we drove them off the, uh, away from uh, uh, the anti-Vietnam, uh, uh, the moratoriums. The seamen refused to go. After the Second World War, uh, the seamen said we will never ever go to, to war again. And so every ship on the coast was a peace ship. And I was a delegate on, on a few ships. We declared every ship, new ship, a peace ship. Or, or uh, connections, inter and this is how the MEU survived. The connections that the, MU, the Siemens Union and the WWF gave the, the MUA the strength internationally. Uh, the, the, the fact is that the Japanese, you know, and, when, when, and there's so much racism in the, in, 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 on, bu on building sites that when you say, the MUA would never have, have survived if it hadn't been for the Japanese Siemens Union. They think, oh, it's the Japanese Siemens Union drove the scabs who were SAS and Army, scabs who were getting trained in, in, in the Gulf states. They were getting trained how to operate the Webb Dock and all that Swanson Dock cranes. 
if the MUA hadn't helped the South Africans, or the, the SUA didn't have the great connection with, with the South African dock workers and the, and the, and the, and the dock workers in, 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 uh, in India, and the longshoremen in San Francisco where they sent ships back, if that hadn't been gone on for hundreds of, over a hundred years of seamen, because we were the we were the we were the the passers on of all the the militancy in each country, because we travelled we travelled the world. Uh, so, you know, it was a long, long. It didn't just happen that the MUA got that support. It was because seamen like myself went. We and my dad travelled internationally. So I know I've got a short time and I, I, I had a lot more to say, but. The one thing I wanted to, because Jerome and me are battling within the CFMU, we're battling to keep the rank and file in control there, like I'm sure all trade unions are. But the one connection we've got to make in this country as trade unions is with Aboriginal people. I mean, my, 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 fa I have, my me and Tanya have been together 14 years. We have two, we have two, two, uh, what I, what I, in, in the southern hemisphere I call Naranjeri Shelty. In the Northern Hemisphere, I call the Sheltie Naranjeri to keep it uh, uh, equal. But I got, and, and your path is, I got connected with, and it's the most litigated case, and some of you might, might not know, the most litigated case in Australian history, the Hindmarsh Island Bridge case. I was the union organizer for nearly eight years of the whole. I was arrested. Uh, uh, I don't know if I paid the fine, I haven't paid a lot of fines. <laughs> <laughs> but, but where I went, and with the Siemens Union and that, on, on, uh, on, uh, on disputes like Roxby Downs with the Siemens Union, and, and uh, I always acknowledge the land. And all of us, you know, you think sometimes you might do it bad, but you should do it. Acknowledge everybody's land when you go on in this country. You know, there's 250 nations in, this, in Australia that you have to acknowledge the land. Uh, the, f the fact is that uh, uh, in, uh, they used, uh, for the second time in Australian history, they used uh, the racial discrimination. They, they uh, uh, abolished it for enough time to f so, the, so, the act could get, so the bridge could get built, the same as they've done in the Northern Territory. And uh, they uh, basically built a, a, a bridge onto, ba which was sacred land, a burial ground. And uh, basically, uh, the, the great powers who want think Aboriginal people to get smashed here, the Mining Federation, the Farmers Federation, and John Howard done it. John Howard's <coughs> government done it. So, as a trade unionist, and I know my time is, uh, my big concern in this country is the union movement's lack of concern for Aboriginal people. You, you, you do get uh, uh, some unions given some, some, in some cases, token support. Because it's, it's okay mouth into words, but if you don't give them support, if you don't give, if you don't put your words into action, it's no use. Uh, and I'd ask all the activists here to make real links with uh, with uh, all the struggles of Aboriginal people in this country, because there are so many. The, the Aboriginal people have been so oppressed. Uh, it's not disadvantaged; it's oppressed. It's uh, Aboriginal people have been oppressed from for 230 whatever uh, years since the invasion. And we should, as, as people from other countries, and people who were born here, white people, we should try and read the true history of this country. Not, not the fucking shit you didn't hear at school. <laughs> uh, or, or not taught at school. So, uh, I just think, one of the th I just want to, some of the actions we took in Sydney, we worked in. Uh, I, somebody mentioned, uh, Jerome, the, the Biggest influence in the 70s for us in, in Sydney was the Upper Clyde Shipyard in Glasgow, the big work in. I, I worked in twice as delegate. We sacked the bosses. It's a great feeling. <laughs> it, is, it is one of the best feelings in the world to sack your boss. <laughs> Especially when they sacked us. <laughs> uh, and when you elect your own foreman, we elected our own foreman, and we ran the second biggest job in, uh, in which was the Sydney Hilton. That's when I, I, I was I was delegate. That when you go to the Sydney Hilton, Hilton, think of me, and, and, and think, think think of the Opera House. I helped put in the windows. 
So we, we actually sacked the bosses twice and took complete control of the job over. And that was the basis of the first deregistration of the BLs. They used what, what we did on that job. So I, I, me and Liz, is, uh, we've got to be kept apart now again with the BLs. <laughs> but, Not but, really. but, but, but the fact is that uh, we've got to keep the dream alive that we can do better in our unions. We can do better than we are doing, you know what I mean? We don't allow the, the, you know, the elected leadership who just wants to get control. That's it. A fully paid job for the rest of your life. We've got to stop that because the union just stagnates, you know what I mean? So I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Okay.